can have a calorimeter that's a styrofoam cup, you can have a calorimeter that's going to be, say, an aluminum can or an, a tin can that's going to uh, hold some water and we combust underneath it. Well, a more efficient way of being able to really determine a, a, a delta H value, let's say, the molar heat of combustion of something, let's say like methane gas, you wouldn't really actually uh, uh, put that, that, that combustion underneath the can because the heat that's going to be liberated is going to escape everywhere and it's really an inefficient way of doing it. A bomb calorimeter, now that's the way that it can be done in really effectively in terms of calculating a molar heat of something. Now take a look though, a bomb calorimeter is just quite simply this. You take a steel container, something that's made out of iron that you would know the heat capacity of, and you put inside of it a bomb which will then explode and release its heat to the environment which is water that's going to be inside here. So you're going to have a lot of H2O that's sealed up in a container that is going to be able to absorb the heat when that CH4 undergoes combustion. Now, um, so if somebody gave you the, the mass of the water and the, uh, the, uh, the metal here, which could be iron, let's say, of this calorimeter, uh, this would be a heat loss equals heat gain question. And you could calculate, say, a molar heat here, or a big H for the heat loss by the methane very efficiently. But here's the thing about bomb calorimetry, that we're going to be able to uh, 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 utilize this concept a little bit later when we talk about that combustion reaction in and of itself you know that this is the balanced equation for the combustion of methane. Here, here look, it's balanced, it's beautiful. But here's the thing. When methane is blown up in our environment, the water that comes off of this reaction is going to be water as a vapor. Because you know that if you're blowing up something like methane or ethane or propane gas and you're burning it, you don't get water droplets coming out of the Bunsen burner or anything like that. You get water vapor that comes off. Well, in this bomb, however, the water vapor that comes off, and it does come off as water vapor, is trapped inside of that bomb, is trapped inside of that, that container under pressure, and the gas turns into a liquid because it's under pressure. So here's the thing. Whenever combustion of a hydrocarbon occurs in a bomb, you put water as a liquid here, not as a gas. That's going to be important for later when we do some calculations involving that equation. But just to tell you right now, that whenever you get combustion occurring in a bomb, or if you get the metabolism of sugar that occurs in a body, we don't get rid of the water from the metabolism of sugars in our bodies by exhaling it, although there is moisture when we exhale we get rid of that by going to the bathroom. So the, the idea is that if you have combustion occurring in a body, let's say, that's through cellular respiration, or in a bomb, a bomb or a body, the water that's produced is going to be a liquid. Otherwise, you always put down water as a gas.